Finally, uh, if we want to look at our vector functions and apply our forces to our vector functions, really it's just extending the sum of the forces is always equal to MA. So if you want to know the forces acting, well, you just need to know the acceleration acting. So we've, we've seen this sort of question a number of times. Uh, the initial position of the particle, if I put T equal to zero, the particle is at 6J. The Cartesian equation, where well, we put X equal to the I component, Y equal to the J component. Um, in this case, it's just as easy to get T cubed is equal to X on three, and then substitute in for T cubed. So we get a nice Cartesian equation of Y equals two X plus six. Don't forget the domain of Y is the range of that function. Uh, and the range of Y is the range of that function, yeah? So in this case, they both are, so that's fine. I want to know the resultant force acting on the particle at time t equal to 1. So the resultant force equals ma. What's the acceleration? Well, the rule for my acceleration, r double dot, is 18 ti plus 36 tj at t equal to 1. There's my acceleration, okay? So the force acting, my acceleration in those is in those directions. So the force acting is three times that in those directions, yeah? If I want to know the magnitude of the resultant force, or the, the magnitude of the resultant force, the square root of I component squared plus J component squared. So you just got to read the question carefully to see what they're after. And that, peoples, is the end of our course. Oh, actually it's not. That is the end of our course in this particular year. All right, off you go.